There is no hard and fast definition of secondary color correction, but in general what it means is adjusting tonality or color in a region within a clip. That region might be an object, a person's face, the sky, a tree, a rock, something inside the clip as opposed to the entire clip. Now the crux of secondary color correction is how do you go about selecting those areas, those regions, those objects? And there are all kinds of ways to do that inside Premiere Pro. In this chapter, I'm going to explain in detail how to do several different methods of secondary color correction. In this video, I want to give you a preview of all those various methods so you can get a good sense of how secondary color correction works. So to check out those various methods, go to Working Files, go to Premiere Pro Projects, and open up Secondary Concepts. The most frequently used way to select an object or a region within a clip is to use the track mat key. Not only can you select an object or an area, you can also exclude an object or an area using a track mat key. So when I introduce track mat keys, I'm going to talk about how you select objects or areas. For example, this headstone here is kind of dark against the lighter area. What I'd like to do is make it brighter and make the rest of this area darker. So I need to somehow select that guy so I can work only on it. And the way you do that is with the track mat key that's connected to a graphic. You can make the graphic in Premiere Pro using a titler. So I go over here, I created this little graphic inside the titler using the pen tool. It's fairly easy to do that. Close that down. And then I connect that graphic to this clip here, which is exactly the same as the one below it. I connect that graphic using the track mat key effect right there. So let me show you how this works. Right now I've got this layer turned off. I'll turn it on. And I'll turn on the luma curves here. You see that I make it a little bit brighter. Then I can go down to this clip below here which is in fact what you're seeing all around this clip except for the headstone. And I can make that darker like that. So we can isolate this thing within that whole clip. Same is true for this clip over here to the right. This rock is kind of bright. I'd rather make it darker so it doesn't pull people's interest down here instead of out here. So again, I create a little graphic. It looks like the rock using the pen tool again. I connect that graphic to this clip using the track mat key. And I'll turn that on again so you can see it. I make it darker using the luma curve like that. And then I can take this clip down here, and I can change its color a bit, and have everything blend together like that. Another use for the track mat key is when you have something moving in the scene. So for example, we have this shot with this window, and the window's too bright, and I want to darken it a bit. But the thing is, the camera zooms in. What do you do about that? So you create a track mat key and then animate the graphic. So I'll show you one instance of that. Here's this clip on top. And I connected that to this graphic here. That is our mat that we use for the track mat key. And then I put that mat in motion so that it follows the motion that the camera creates. And that dark area stays there, and you do that for all four windows. Another secondary color concept is the vignette. A vignette is kind of a soft border, a little oval border around things. Right now there is no oval border here, but you can create that using a track mat key again. Here's a little oval we created. It's very simple to make that. And these areas here will be made darker. Close that down. We connect it to this clip on top, which is the same as the clip below it. Once I turn on this layer, see the vignette show up. Now when I turned it on, you went, oh, that's pretty obvious, right? But it's not necessarily obvious if it's on to begin with. If I go to this next clip, you may not notice that the vignette is there. If I turn it off, ah, then you go, hmm, I see that vignette now. But if it's there, you don't really notice it because people are drawn to the center of the clip. You can also use something like a vignette to create a blurred background. Take a look at this. Here we have this basic scene, but I'd like to blur this background a little bit more so I can create another track mat, another mat that we can use as a track mat like that. And I can connect it to this clip here, turn that on. You don't see anything happen yet. The clip below here, I'm going to blur. Turn on the blur for that. That lets us then make the background blur while we keep her in focus. There are other ways to create a vignette. You can use the so-called circle effect. This is the circle effect being applied to a black mat or a black clip above this person. I turn that off for a second. You see how that looked originally. But there's the circle effect applied there, another way to make a vignette. Sometimes you want to change the color of an object in the scene. There are several ways to do that. Let's look at this. There are three ways that I'm going to discuss. Change the color, paint bucket, and RGB curves. For example, change the color. I can do that. Take the bowl and turn it green or any other color. Paint bucket doesn't work quite so well with this blue bowl. It works pretty well with something that's very distinct, like a chroma key green. But nevertheless, we turned it sort of green there. And finally, RGB curves. It's another way to change colors, like so. Going over here, I have all this yellow that I want to turn to some other color, but I don't want to have this thing turn to a different color, and I don't want this to turn to a different color. So again, I use the track mat key, like so, to just isolate that little region there. 
and then I can change the color using the same methods as before. I can turn on the change to color there, and limit it to that. I turn over the paint bucket, the three-way color corrector. Now all of those look pretty wild in terms of the color. You probably wouldn't want to end up using them like that. But since this is on a layer above another layer, you can change the opacity, like so. And you can change the blending mode, like so, for example. You can do kind of the reverse. You can take an object here and retain its color, but make everything else grayscale, desaturate everything. And to do that, I use the leave color effect. If I turn that on, you make the blue bowl stick around, but everything else turn gray. Over here, I have these women sitting on the bench, and I selected that shirt and kept that color. Now, the shirt was not that bright to begin with. I made the color more intense using the fast color corrector, and then I selected it. And the lipstick here, and on her and on her, kind of shone through. So I excluded the areas of the lipstick by creating another track matte key using this particular graphic to exclude their faces, but still keep the shirt in the picture. I also want to talk about using the tint effect. You can create a sepia tone like this, and by the way, if you do that, the sepia tone will look kind of dull, but then you can ramp up the contrast by applying the luma curve to that. And also you can put a tint on a color clip like this, and if you put it on an adjustment layer above the clip, you have more latitude. You can change the opacity of it like so. Also change the blending mode if you like. Going down the line here, there's a thing called tonal range definition, where you can say exactly what should be a highlight or what should be a shadow or what should be a midtone. And once you do that, then you have more control over how you control the color in your clip. So for example, this building, I wanted to make sure that area was considered to be a highlight and nothing else in there, no midtones, just highlights. So I use tonal range definition here inside the three-way color corrector or inside the RGB color corrector. I changed the definition from the default definition of what constitutes a highlight to my definition of what constitutes a highlight. And that gives me more latitude over how I control the color. And I also use the track mat key here to help isolate the area. But for example, let me turn this one on for a second. Clicking on the three-way color corrector. Then you can see how we can control just that area because we define that area as a highlight. We work only with the highlight wheel to make the changes there. I can do the same thing over here. In this case, I can convert the sky from midtones and highlights to only highlights. So I can work with highlights exclusively there. Or I can do the opposite. I can take these mid-tones and blacks here and turn them into just blacks, which is what I did here. I'll click on you, open up the three-way color corrector, and here I just worked with this whole area. I converted it to just blacks here. I can work with that separately from everything else. Finally, there are a couple of effects that have secondary color correction controls within them. Going down there to click on this one. We'll take a look at this first clip here. This building really is not that pale looking. It's actually kind of orange looking. And so you can use the three-way color correctors, secondary color controls, which are down here, to define areas that you want to fix like that. And once you define them, then you can change their color, which we did up here with this particular controller there. And over here, we can select the ocean, for example. Open this up. I'm going down here and show you the secondary color controls there. Show the mask that we create for this one by turning it on. We decide that we're going to fix that area only. Turn that mask off. Then we change the colors for that area by making the ocean look a little bit bluer there. So there are all sorts of ways to select regions within a clip and then apply color or tonality changes to those objects. 